All right, Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Getting past the uh, kind of Christmas winter blizzard here. Really wanted to get out here and uh, test some of my historic gear. So what I'm doing here is trekking a little bit through the woods around my homestead here. It's a much younger woods than we would have seen in the 18th century, especially in this part of the country. Um, but I really wanted to get out and go through and really work with some of the equipment that I've been organizing and, and getting around for some of my personas here. Uh, so I'm wearing totally period appropriate equipment um, for the 18th century for what they would have had. I've done quite a bit of research here uh, over this last summer and fall trying to find the right stuff and talking to some good friends. And uh, much like with any other equipment that you might have if you're into camping or woodworking or anything kind of hobby related, you really need to get out and practice with that equipment and that's something I really wanted to try doing uh, in this kind of bitter cold. Now I don't recommend necessarily that you yourself go out and do this. Um, I do have my phone on me. I am visible to my homestead uh, and my, my wife is going to come and check on me if I'm not back in an appropriate amount of time. So always be safe and be careful. Uh, I'm doing everything I can to do this safely. Um, don't want to take necessarily the nasty weather that we can go through uh, for granted and, uh, and not take it seriously. following an old deer trail right now. It's kind of I work along a, an old creek bed here. You can see a little bit of how these deer are working this area. We're kind of through the hunting season here in Indiana. Uh, so the deer patterns are much different, especially now in this terribly cold weather. Starting with my feet, I've recently purchased a pair of South Union Mills colonial buckle shoes. I've been wearing them around the farm, kind of breaking them in and getting them comfortable. And uh, it's been a little bit getting used to, but working through the woods here, I've slipped a little bit here and there, but um, not terribly horrible as you might think. Um, if you're used to modern hiking shoes and things, it is a big change. But really, if you are, you know, kind of practiced in navigating the woods, you can really not to say that I am by any means, kind of get sure footing before you go down a hill or any brush. And you're really just fine. Inside my shoes are obviously my feet. Um, just my normal modern feet, really. I'm wearing this pair of knit wool stockings which is contemporary for the period. We see a lot of documentation talking about carrying a pair of extra stockings, especially during a winter campaign or in preparation for the winter, having some kind of heavy sock. So that's what I'm wearing. Nothing underneath it. Like I said, try to do this as period as I could here for this little excursion. Now you'll notice how I'm navigating some of these hillsides, really trying to go through them a little bit slowly. And here I can kind of connect with another deer path along the edge of this woods here. Up from there, I have my set of leather buckled garters holding my stockings up. And I really need to say, my legs are fine. My big concern about this little trip was really the the snow getting into my stockings. Now, this is not uh, totally terribly deep snow. We do have some wind pushing it around. But as far as the snow goes here, uh, not really feeling at all in my feet, which I'm rather impressed with. I'm rather pleased to report. Coming up from my legs, I'm wearing my knickers. These are our linen duck 
knicker. They're brown. I like brown. <laughs> kind of appropriate, I think, for the mid 18th century. As we get into the later 18th century, as well as into the early 19th century, we see pants used a lot, um, which would be period for what I'm wearing for the most part. But I went with the knickers trying to get that full experience like I was talking about and testing out what could have been worn by some of the folks in the mid to late 18th century, moving through the woods this time of year. Coming up to my torso, I have a linen shirt. It's also from South Union Mills. I just got um, in the post. Very pleased with the quality on it. It's recommended to me by Jake Book of the Shirt Tail Mess as a more period appropriate shirt than I have been wearing. Really pleased with the quality on it. Uh, very affordable. Um, I ordered a size large and it was a little bit large. On top of that, I have a black silk cravat recently purchased from Townsend's as a more appropriate neckerchief. I have a wool waistcoat on top of that buttoned with some pewter buttons. My waistcoat, this purple one that I'm wearing is more of a 1750s style waistcoat that you might see kind of the F&I period. I'm kind of going out of fashion then as we get into the 18th century. On top of that, you can see here, I have a French and Indian War era, kind of a seven years war era coat on top. This is all wool with some linen on the inside. But I really very warm, even in the winds, as I'm sure you can see in some of the brush around me. On top of that, on my head, I'm wearing my not quite appropriate glasses, but we're working on that. You'll notice I have my ears wrapped with a piece of linen. And, uh, and that's something that we see in some documentation where you might not have knit caps being accessible for some out there, especially on campaign if they've been lost. The linen around my ears is not um, super thermal. It doesn't have a lot of insulation factors you might think about in the modern sense but it is keeping the wind off of my ears. And really, the only parts of me currently affected by the cold, believe me or not here, uh, are my fingers and my nose, my face. The rest of me is quite warm, even as I'm walking through here. Not a lot of movement. Um, I will say the next probably less insulated area on my body is my thighs, and they are feeling the wind a little bit, but nothing. Nothing too detrimental. All in all for this trip, I walked about one and a quarter miles through the woods here in this kind of chilly weather. Uh, the wind chill was down around negative 12 and the air temperature was right around zero. And really back in the woods for this walk, I didn't really notice the wind a whole lot. As a little bit of a review of the equipment that I took out, I'm very impressed with how well it held up and how warm I was through the entire walk. If I was going to be out for an extended period of time, I'd really want some wool mittens to cover up my fingertips. Uh, that would really decrease a lot of the minor discomfort that I felt. As far as the footwear goes, I know that there's a lot of hesitation about these kinds of shoes. It's kind of colonial footwear because I had that same hesitation myself. But it really performed well for me going out on this walk. Now, I wasn't on a life-saving or, or life-threatening march or incursion you know through the wilderness here i could kind of do this casually and at my own pace uh, the really the only difficulty i had was either going up or down a hill navigating hills is kind of like cross-country skiing um, at least in my experience uh, i had to kind of cut across the hillside diagonally to get up it and then coming down that hill i pointed my toes inward so that any sliding i did would be kind of limited and I used uh, kind of the terrain being in the trees and kind of the scrubby little growths here and there to kind of hold on to to navigate that terrain. 
obviously not as as nice as you know my insulated muck boots uh, for going through a kind of a snowy terrain like this but apart from the navigating the hills the shoes really did well for me you can see in the video i slipped a few times here and there but nothing catastrophic that being said once i got back inside i removed my wool stockings and removed the shoes i really noticed how much my feet had gone through during this walk. Now it wasn't anything to be worried about. There was no evidence of frostbite or anything. And there still was a limited amount of moisture and snow in the shoes. But I did notice that the shoes themselves were becoming very saturated. And my stockings as well, at least down on the soles of my feet, and I'm not sure that it was necessarily sweat or a combination of snow and sweat but my stockings were noticeably uh, a little damp as well. So I think in terms of longevity here, we're seeing similar experience in, in my little walk that we might see in some of the historical journals that we can reference about moving through the wilderness or moving through the wooded terrain with this kind of equipment. You see a lot of times in these journals, multiple pairs of uh, stockings being carried, uh, like we talked about a little bit earlier, heavy and light, uh, so you can switch out and dry out the stockings from the day, as well as at least one ancillary pair of moccasins. Regardless of if you're wearing the shoes, you know, kind of a colonial buckle shoe, a lot of times we see folks carrying a set of buckskin or buffalo hide moccasins if they're out in the woods for a long period of time so they can switch out and dry out and keep their feet dry. That being said, I would not be at all concerned to go on a, a days long hike in this equipment. I know it's going to be wet. I know the shoes aren't waterproof. It's not Gore-Tex. I know my feet are gonna be a little unhappy at the end of the day, but I don't think it's out of the question in the modern era for us to do this, you know, in my instance, for a little bit of fun. All in all, this was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to get out and test some of the equipment and test some of the clothing and see kind of some practical application of it in these cold weather temperatures that we experienced here in, in the winter of 2022. I really encourage you, if you have, you know, some cold weather clothing or if you have, uh, you know, a little bit of this bug to get out and try it, go out and try it. Do, you know, do it safely, uh, you know, do it appropriately for your capabilities in the area that you're in. But I really enjoyed it. And even coming back, I... I I found myself thinking more and more about what I could do next time and, and how I could improve this and, and maybe what I would adjust to go further maybe in another trek. You know, I think for me, you may have noticed my pack was a little tight on my shoulders. I adjusted the straps for that pack and, and stitched them up and I did not think about a cold weather layering as far as how much I would be wearing. So for a spring, summer, warmer temperatures, the knapsack on my back worked very well, but for winter temperatures, I need to add just a couple inches, I think, on both sides to make that a little more comfortable. There'll be some other things, but that's really, this was just about getting out and having some fun and sharing that little excursion with you. So I, I really encourage you to get out there Enjoy some of this stuff. Enjoy some of this clothing. Enjoy some of this gear. You know, it's not something that you just have to bring out at an event, you know, or, or when you're when you're dealing with the public. It can be a lot of fun to, to put this stuff on and, and try it out for yourself. So I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about this or anything else related to muzzleloading, please visit ilovemuzzleloading.com. I'm going to link to a couple of blogs in the description of this video, uh, the Buffalo Trace 1765 and the Shirt Tail Mess. There are a couple of blogs I've been reading a lot of uh, this year and this winter, especially since I've been inside so much, um, but they provide a lot of great documentation source material for you to reference. I've been referencing it and I really encourage you at home to reference this as well if this is the kind of thing that you're interested in. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> okay, hills. Not a fan of hills. Oh, almost made it without falling. Almost. <laughs>